I'd like to welcome uh, Ms Emily Vanderstock, who is our PhD candidate at Sydney University and co-founder of the Lourdes Forest Research Node. She uses participatory methods to study insects and community resilience and is passionate about participatory science. So her topic is Minds Over Matter, Citizen Science and Air Pollution. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, that was me trying to record myself, not play my recording. Um, can you hear me okay? All right. Um, so I'd also like to la um, acknowledge that we're on the land of the Ghana people, who, um, whose people's sovereignty has never been ceded, and to think about and recognise the different forms of learning and knowledge sharing that have been ongoing on this land for time immemorial. Um, I, my name is Emily Vanderstock. I wear a couple of hats. I'm at the University of Sydney uh, doing a PhD in insect pollinator ecology, citizen science and urban agriculture. Um, but today I'm wearing my Laird Forest Research Node hat. Um, and as part of some honours research I did in 2016 with this incredible group, I'm going to be talking about particulate matter pollution and some citizen science we did in northwest New South Wales. So air pollution is not just an issue for cities, it's also an important uh, rural issue. With, um, with coal mines, with agriculture in these places, there's all forms of air pollutants that come about. Uh, one particular air, air pollutant of interest is particulate matter. So that is these fine specks of dust, um, both solid and liquid particles in the air. And they're so fine that you can see on a human hair here, it's just that 10 microns in diameter, or those 2.5 microns. And these come from a variety of sources in rural areas, including blasting, ex excavation and transport from mines, but also from sowing and ploughing um, in agriculture. So it's a complex um, issue to look at where those sources are coming from. Um, coal dust um, or particulate matter is important because it's harmful to human health. It causes all sorts of respiratory diseases um, and non-fatal heart attacks, as well as, as, well as asthma. And it's also harmful to plant health. So by increasing the transpiration rate and leaf temperature, it can then decrease photosynthesis and growth rate. And this is obviously important in an agricultural area because that um, damage to plants can also affect yield and um, livelihoods. So I'm often asked, coal dust particulate matter, what's the difference? Ah! Well, coal dust is a particular kind of particulate matter that contains these carbonates, silicates, and trace heavy metals. But it is not just the coal part of the coal dust that's important, it's all sorts of particulate matter that is important. So going over to our field site, over in Malls Creek and Bogabri, you drive uh, northwest eight hours from Sydney, and you get to this small town. You're surrounded by agriculture, you're surrounded by forest, um, and also these coal mines in an area. And I don't know why it's doing this automatically. Um, but so we can see that there are different, uh, different land values and different um, perceptions of the land. And this causes an issue for measuring air pollution and for what community wants from an air pollution monitoring scheme. Um, coal mining in this region, uh, there are three main coal mines. There's the Moles Creek coal mine, which uh, began construction in 2014. So it's a very new coal mine, a very big coal mine. And there's also the Bogabri and the Tarawonga mine, which are a bit smaller. Oh, oh dear, that was exciting. Um, so introducing the Laird Forest Research Node. So we are a network of a community of farmers, of university students, of subject matter specialists, and we've come together to do citizen science in an area where air pollution monitoring has um, some complications and where community really want to be involved in the process. Um, we started with doing some fauna and flora surveys, um, we've also done some noise pollution monitoring, and I invite you to have some more chats to us about that later. Um, and with this, we've involved um, the Australian Student Environment Network, or AZN for short, to increase those uh, city and rural partnerships and bringing students out into the field to really see what it is like um, on the land. Um, our main goals are about building community capacity, um, linking this urban-rural, and creating good data, valid science, and doing this with community. And what's really crucial to our model is to then use this to influence decision makers and the management of pollution issues in our area, to use it as a lobbying tool rather than a science outcome in and of itself. 
So dust pollution in Moles Creek, the way it's measured at the moment, is that um, the mining companies such as Whitehaven uh, have their own uh, air pollution monitoring network schemes. They do self-monitoring uh, and self-reporting of that data. They then upload that data um, or give it to uh, OEH and um, the EPA, who then cross-reference that and then it becomes publicly available. But where it starts is with the coal mining doing their own monitoring, and that's what really causes this community concern because the data that they're receiving does not match their personal experience um, from this hazy, hazy, dusty morning um, that farmers are experiencing every day. Um, and when we looked at that, that experience is valid in and of itself. Um, but then corroborated by this data, which we found, we found between 18 to 28 percent of the particulate matter that was reported by the mining companies, I'm really sorry, it keeps automatically changing, um, has negative values. So if we're thinking about those specks of dust in the air, it's impossible to have negative specks of dust. So that's what this data is suggesting, that between 18 to 28 in 2015 and 2016 percent is negative specks of dust. That's impossible. And what happens, and I won't go into this graph in too much detail, but I just want to point out that when there is a trough in the grey, the rolling um, average of dust, you see a peak in the red, which is the, um, the negative uh, amounts of dust. So when we're seeing these, in, all these negative values of dust, we're seeing that the air pollution seems better, it seems safer. And that's just not the case. So this was reported in the Sydney Morning Herald, um, so it receives some attention from the cities, and it really establishes why we need to do independent dust monitoring and where the role of the Laird Forest Research Node comes in. So um, we began with uh, two projects. We've done a number of projects, but I only have time to talk about two of them. Um, and that is dust deposition gauges and foliar dust deposition, and I'll go through them individually. So with the dust deposition gauges, what happens is the mining network, and this happens nationally, you have essentially a glass bottle with a glass funnel which collects dust um, and this is rotated on a monthly basis. And that can get the dust that is deposited into these um, bottles and give an idea of deposited particulate matter. So what we did was um, we set up a series of our own dust gauges um, and our good friend Terry here, he designed um, and created these based on the Australian um, standards. And then we, when we changed those bottles over, we sent them to an independent laboratory for analysis and we fundraised with the community to be able to do this. Uh, and we set it up, setting them up was a real community affair, it brought lots of generations together, it brought lots of people together, it was really exciting, despite being a cold, rainy, windy day, when everyone was very excited to set them up. And changing them over monthly, this was also a collaboration between farmers in the community, between city folk, um, sometimes, you know, getting bogged in bogabri and uh, trying to get the, the dust gauges in and out, that was a real um, exciting kind of partnership empowering way of engaging with science in different ways. Um, and this is what it looks like out in the field. You can see a um, grazing field and then behind there is the um, mine overburden, which is that um, artificial hill of um, matter. And we uh, did this along a transect. So, uh, so down here we have the uh, uh, mine in that corner there, and then the prevailing wind in the area is southeasterly, so we created a northwest transect. We had three gauges um, along that transect, and what's interesting about the gauges, G1 gauge 1, is that it was within a few hundred metres of the Whitehaven gauge. And so we could look a little bit about that pattern of distance from the mine, and we could also look at um, are there any relative or absolute um, uh, changes with the Whitehaven data. And that Whitehaven gauge is just one of a series of monitoring stations in the area. So what we found was, um, I'll just point out this graph. So on the y-axis we have the deposited particulate matter over monthly. On the x-axis we have the Whitehaven gauge, one closest to the mine, to three furthest from the mine. And then in colours we have the months. So the first thing that jumps out at me is that September, October, whoa, we have this crazy spike in dust, what is going on? Um, 
And that actually makes a lot of sense because it's harvest season. So these gauges are out in fields. Um, we're looking at deposited particulate matter, which um, lands quite close to the source. And so you'd expect to see a spike in those months. What is interesting is that in the Whitehaven dust gauge, we don't see that spike. And that's possibly because it's reported on a rolling average as opposed to a seasonal pattern. Um, so that's an interesting um, point of comparison. Uh, the other thing I forgot to point out was on the four, that number, that dotted line, that represents four grams uh, per metre squared per month. And if you cross that line, whoa, we've got some air pollution issues in the area. We really need to look into that. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that we don't really have a, a pattern of distance. It might look like it because the first um, October is so high, but really dust pollution is really complex and we really need to look in, be looking at this in more depth and in different ways. Um, so we did look at it in more depth and in a different way. We looked at foliar particulate um, deposition, foliar being on foliage on leaves. So what we did is, um, again, we set up this transect, uh, and this time we had five replicates at each um, distance, at two, five, uh, seven and 12 kilometres. And at each um, station, we had a little tomato station. And um, tomatoes are great because they've got these hairy leaves that capture dust and stuff. Um, and so we put these out, we put them out for six days, uh, and then we chopped off their heads, and we brought them to the lab and we measured the amount of dust on them and to see, oh, is there any pattern of distance on leaf matter? And indeed there was. So we can see from this graph that close to the mine is significantly a greater amount of dust than the farthest from the mine. And the middle point, that seven kilometre point, acts as an intermediary between. Uh, the other thing to look on at this graph is uh, the that 0.13 micrograms of dust per centimetre squared of leaf. Now that is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of dust. That's a speck of dust. But we're talking about the amount of dust on these small pockets of plants. When you multiply that over time and you multiply that over fields, that could be quite a lot of dust and that could maybe have some agricultural ramifications. So that's quite interesting in and of itself. Um, and comparing the, the dust gauge data with the foliage data, it's interesting to note that maybe we need to be thinking about different ways of doing air pollution monitoring uh, and, and um, uh, linking with different systems that the government is also doing in the area. So some outcomes, the theme of this talk. Uh, we, we shared our data in the, with the Bogabai Community Forum and we invited the Environmental Protection Authority, the EPA, to come along and share what they had to say about air quality in the area and about um, a developing uh, Namoi uh, Regional Air Quality Monitoring Network. Uh, so that was really exciting to have along. Also representatives from the mines came along. So it was really like we filled up this hall and we were able to have those conversations and talk about particulate matter pollution in the area using a platform of that data. We also shared our results with the Narrabri Shire Council and having that uh, policy linked to our research is really important. So talking to those local decision makers. Uh, we've also uh, had a program which really highlights mutual education between city students, between city residents, by providing those, those road trips, those citizen science trips, and with um, our folk out in the country. And there's so much different learning and sharing that can happen across both of these groups. And it's really powerful to be in a space where that can happen. Um, upskilling communities to do ecological monitoring. This is an amazing um, fact that, uh, say, groups like Streamwatch have been doing for generations. Um, and it was really great to be able to do that in this really small rural town around air quality monitoring. And we'd really love to help facilitate that more as well as fostering positive farmer and scientist relationships. So um, I think Margot Law was talking about it earlier this conference, is that sometimes those relationships can be quite tense, but by upskilling each other, by doing this mutual cultural and um, scientific education with each other, uh, it can be a really great way to foster those relationships, make them stronger, and then be able to do this monitoring together. 
Finally, some challenges and next directions. Um, we're really um, hoping to contribute to conversations around the Namoi Regional Air Quality Monitoring Network. Um, because uh, this is going to be rolled out in New South Wales like very soon and we really want Bogabri to be on the map with that. So to have those conversations with community and with the um, government bodies that are regulating that is really important to us. We also want to continue to lobby for a particular attribution study because I mentioned rural particulates are really complicated, um, lots of sources. And at the moment, we're doing a water quality uh, research and groundwater um, baseline data project. So I'd just like to acknowledge the fabulous community um, and the fabulous people that have uh, come together to make these projects possible and who I just love working with and um, invite any questions, but I believe we might do that at the end. So I might just end on a quote uh, from a beautiful member. For us, it doesn't end when we uncover the numbers. Our approach takes responsibility to solve or at least address the problem. And that's what the Lead Forest Research Note is about. Thank you.